Hi there. Welcome to The Preventable, the podcast giving you a seat at the table with conversations about the intersection of alcohol, drugs, and mental health in everyday lives. Take a seat and join us. Welcome to The Preventable. With me today is an esteemed guest. He goes by many names, and we'll get into that in a second, uh, but many, many names. And, um, you know, just really grateful to Hubbard for allowing us to use this space every other week. Um, really wouldn't be able to happen without them. So uh, without any, you know, further ado, please welcome <laughs> Kevin Harris, a.k.a. KJ Harris, a.k.a. <laughs> DJ Kevin Kev. Welcome to The Preventable. <laughs> Wow, all those names. Okay, yeah, I'll take them. I'll take them. I'll take them. But Kevin is fine. That's fine. Kevin is fine. That's, okay. Uh, yeah, either one. It okay. Doesn't matter, all right. Yeah. Well, okay, <laughs> Kevin. So I had the privilege of running into you, meeting you for the first time mm -hmm. at the uh, North St. Louis Juneteenth celebration. Yes, yes. And you came up with a ball, like just as a ball <laughs> of energy. Right. And you were like, you need to meet me. Is right. basically what it came to me. Like, you were just like, hello, I'm Kevin. <laughs> nice to meet you. You need to meet me. Right. So, since then, I feel like I kind of can't get you out of my hair. I feel like, you know, you're just sort of like around, you know, you're like a rash or something. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. But you have this amazing book. Yes, so, I want to talk yes. about this. Okay. And let's maybe start here because I think this will kind of unfold sort of how our paths crossed and where you are and where you're hoping to go. Right. So this book, volume one, volume the one. first of many volumes, Yes. it's called From DJ to Deacon, The Life of an Alcoholic. And just to be clear, that's how you identify, right? Yes. As an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's talk about this book. Okay. And I would like you to talk to me about you as DJ Kevy Kev. <laughs> Bring us back there, my friends. Oh, take her back. Take, take her take back. Take me back. Well, take you me know, back. Uh, how that came about. A that day book. in the life of DJ Kevy Kev, by that, the way. Oh, wow. Yep. She, mm -hmm. she read the book, y'all. I did. She read it. I did. <laughs> A day in the life of Kevy Kev. Uh, that kind of came about uh, because, I don't know, I, I'm always, I'm a big thinker. Okay. You know, I always think beyond and outside of the box. Mm -hmm. And, um, Actually, when I got one year sober, I was at the 623 Club in uh, Belleville, Illinois. And I was outside, you know, it was a meeting going on, and I thought about going in a meeting, which I never did, which is crazy. But I sat outside and smoked cigarettes and drank coffee, and everybody's like, hey, Kevin Kev, you coming to the meeting? I'm like, uh, I'm, maybe, yeah, I'm on my way. So I procrastinated, like, maybe for, like, the whole meeting, and it's only an hour. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting in the parking lot, and I'm like, Okay, a year sober, and I'm like, you know, looking up, God, what do you want me to do with this, man? What am I supposed to do with this? Now, in recovery, they say, you know, you're supposed to give it away. So he kind of, in so many words and so many signs, you know, showed me that I needed to get his way. So, I, you know, that little voice in the back of your head, it was like, I need you to help people like you mm. to get them closer to me and leave it alone, and I'll take care of the rest. So... That came about, and I just started writing. Mm. And I don't like too much. I don't. I, I don't. I like writing. I don't like writing too much. I like you know just scripting mm -hmm. some stuff. So that came, and I started writing some stuff. And this was a year being sober. Mm. I wrote all that that you see the manuscript in the book a year before I was sober. I didn't publish it until October of 2022. Hmm. because for some reason I just didn't mentally, I wasn't there, mm -hmm. you know, and, and probably because of the time, the moments in my life, that time, it wasn't my, it wasn't my, my time to shine yet, you know, and us being selfish as, you know, addicts, I was a little selfish, a whole lot selfish, <laughs> but I was kind of thinking of, man, I can make some money doing this stuff. Ooh, recovery. Uh, addiction and thinking of all the places like Gateway and Chestnut and I was like yeah I can be that because you're an Illinois guy yes yeah I am in Illinois and I'm thinking like I could be one of those I can be a big corporation to help people you know get sober and I was like no that's not really what I wanted to do it sounded good don't yeah, get me yeah, wrong yeah, right? it sounded good but I found that my love for recovery 
that's what drew me to uh, just doing everything that I'm doing now. Yeah. You know, so. So let's <clears throat> let's take it back for a second. So a couple of questions. So yes. alcohol was your drug of choice, correct? Yes. Okay. And in the book, and, and I circled this because I was thinking that we've never actually talked about this. Okay on the pod, which is you call yourself a functioning alcoholic. Yes. You say, um, I wasn't, you say, yeah, that's me, the functioning alcoholic. So what does that mean? Functioning alcoholic is... Because I think we say it and people hear it, but what does that mean, at least as you understand it? Yeah, um... And I can tell you by an episode that happened with me, I used to draw blood, phlebotomy. Yes, you say, yes, a drunk drawing blood. How ironic. (laughs) Imagine that, me, a functioning alcoholic drawing your blood. There are people like me all around the world. We have job, family, a life. The only thing is we love to drink heavy. We look just like you, but if you sit back and observe... You can see we're hiding something. And that's why I use the word, and I'm real big on words. That's why I use the word observe. Because if you just look, if I just, you know, if I just look at this bottle right. and say, oh, this is pure leaf. Wow. Ooh, okay, are they going to be one of our sponsors you know, now, Kevin? Like, oh, no. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but okay, so here's this bottle here's of this iced bottle tea. And mm-hmm. this bottle of iced tea, and it's pure leaf. That's what I see, low sugar and this and that. But I'm just looking at it. But if I'm observing it, then I will actually look at the ingredients that's in here. Mm -hmm. I'm really observing. So if a person is sitting back and they just, oh, he just drinking, that go to DJ Kevin Kev, go buy him a drink, he'll play the song you want. But if there's one person sitting back, like, hmm, okay, Mm -hmm. they could see what the normal person won't see. So a functioning alcoholic or addict, whatever you want you want to call it who whatever your drug of choice may be is somebody who is still part of society still doing their job like going i quote in the book every going day, to work being uh, in a relationship all of that driving a car all of that all the stuff but underneath the surface they still are doing their addiction and it's kind of like hiding mm. you know kind of like a kid mm-hmm. hiding like most mm-hmm. of the time when i went to a lot of my my first sponsor uh good man I used to go to him <laughs> drunk mm. and he's my sponsor, mm. but he didn't, I don't know if he knew it or not, you know, but I couldn't do anything without alcohol. Mm-hmm. I had to have at least a shot to function just to function. And so when we talk to kids about what it means when addiction or substance use disorder takes over, it's like what we say is, and we show through videos and things is mm-hmm. that you're not drinking or using to get high. Right. You're drinking and using to feel normal. It's right. your baseline. Right. And so a quote unquote functioning alcoholic right. is somebody who needs to drink mm-hmm. to get up and go to work. Right. To be at work, mm-hmm. to go to that family function. Yes. And it's different than like, oh, I'm going to have a glass of wine before I'm with my mother in law, which right. it's not. Bad, better or worse it's just different it's, it's just different, like right. i can't even think about going and interacting right. with in this situation right. without alcohol to reset right my brain and that's where people like you just you just said it perfectly it's just different it's no right there's no wrong it's just different this that's is how right. i have to cope with it that's right so your body becomes immune to it and it gets used to it mm-hmm mm-hmm you mentioned in the book a lot about what I'll, I'll call some mentors, mm-hmm. some people in your life that really played a significant role. Um, one in particular, you kind of had a play brother mm-hmm. that you talk about. Yes. Um, five years older than you, um, took you under your wing. Talk a little bit about that relationship and the importance of mentorship, because what I see you now mm-hmm. is sort of flipping the script mm-hmm. and you're playing that role for other people, <laughs> either right. officially or unofficially. Right. 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 So talk a little bit about the importance of mentorship and com- camaraderie right. in, uh, in your recovery. And I think um, a lot of us in recovery get lost 
trying to find the perfect mentor or mm. sponsor. And what I was taught is that you and your sponsor may not get along. You may disagree to agree, and that's fine. But keep in mind that the goal is to stay sober. Whether you don't want to work the steps, whether you don't want to go to meetings or what. My sponsor, he would always say, if this cup keeps you sober, then keep it. Whatever you do that makes you sober, that keeps you away from that drug or whatever addiction, use that mm -hmm. to the best of your ability. Uh, my big brother taught me how to DJ. My big play brother, he taught me how to DJ. And he also talked about, he taught me how to bowl, <laughs> how to play darts. So he kind of taught me a lot of activities that I do now. But also within those moments, there was life lessons. You know, he let me bump my head a couple of times, a whole lot of times. Mm -hmm. But he never turned his back on me. Mm -hmm. He just said, bruh, why you never, why you didn't tell me? Mm -hmm. That's all. That, that was the part that hurt him is that we had over 30 years relationships still now. And I didn't tell him what was up here. He knew I was drinking because we both were drinking. We were DJs in clubs. Mm -hmm. And I would listen to him all the time, you know, here and there and go in one ear and out the other one because I'm the youngest. And, um, even today, I thank him because we reconnected. It's not. It's better now because we both are sober and we're both mm -hmm. in church <laughs> than it was then. Mm -hmm. It's like you see these two DJs that was out doing that. Now you see these two DJs in here doing this. It's like, whoa. whoa. <laughs> right. You know, so having a mentor like, you know, my big play brother, man, that just... He was like the father figure out in the streets for me. And you've really paid that forward, yes. correct? And yes. you are um, working on or have become a certified peer specialist? I am working on a certified peer specialist. Amazing. I just, uh, let's see, the P Missouri Prevention Specialist. I'm yes. going to work towards that too because I know that me being a support part, is is great but then i know the connect and a network over here in missouri if you're credentialed yeah. in other words mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. i know people look at well are you a counselor you know well, what you, most people want to receive me if i say i'm not a counselor i just say no i'm a patient with a badge mm. so in other words i'm like you but i just have a badge that's all right right you know so can you DJ sober now or is it, does it bring up a lot of stuff? <laughs> oh, wow. Is that a bad question? No, Should I not, not have asked that? Mm -mm, no, no. It's crazy that you ask because everybody asks me that. Really? Yes. Yes. They ask me. And I just, I mean, mentally. Because they want you to DJ? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Most right. of the time. <laughs> I can imagine people are like, hey, can you come DJ? And in my brain, I'd be like, I don't know. Can I? <laughs> no, but it, when I hear it, it, it just takes me back to when, you know, uh, when times were good, you know, the drinking and, you know, back I'm, you know, I'm 52. So, you know, back in the 80s and 90s, it was, uh, it was going down. But now it's like I think about it. I'm like, nah. And I've passed up so much money. I'm not going to even lie. I passed up so much money. <laughs> so, so much money. Much so money. much Emphasis money. Emphasis on so. So much money. Okay. But I look at it like mentally I'm not ready to do that. Mm -hmm. So I left it to the youngsters that's, that was coming up mm -hmm. behind me and just try to help them out, you know. But, I mean, I just – I. I put it like this. I DJ for recovery now. Got it. So talk about your role at the Community Wellness Project. What does a typical day look like for you? Well, for me, uh, I'm a HIV counselor in the state of Illinois and Missouri mm -hmm. of Community Wellness Project based out of a corporate office in St. Louis, uh, 906 Olive Boulevard, second floor. And what we do is rapid HIV testing, hep C testing um, on I work on the Illinois side. Mm -hmm. So I am the harm reduction coordinator over there. So I work with the arts and smarts program um, 
just to try to help the addicts up there and kind of let them know that, you know, what you're doing. I, I Let's say this. I go up at CWP and then I'll probably within the middle of that say, yeah, I'm Kevin and I'm an alcoholic. And they'll look at me different like, wow, mm-hmm. whoa, this dude didn't. So STDs, HIV, needle exchange, Narcan, condoms. I put it all together. Which I know how to do. Yeah, because we're <laughs> reducing the harm. Exactly. And in a perfect world, you know, we would love people not to use needles at all. But yes. if they are using or until they discontinue their use, we want them to be as safe as possible. Right. 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 And whether that's, you know, and, and it's the same with sex and it's the same. And we had Michelle from Mo Network on okay. not that long ago. And she was talking about harm reduction and really kind mm-hmm. of breaking down what it is and right. what it's not. Right. 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 But really what it is and it is to keep people alive. Right. That's right. what it is. And that's what we try to promote is that the reduction part. That's the part that people are missing. We can't we can't make a grown person stop. We can't make you stop doing what you're going to do. But what we can do is help you reduce the risk of catching all that other stuff that's out there that may have something to do with what you're doing. Just a safer way, you know, and we get I know a lot of agencies get criticized for that. But harm reduction, you know, the word itself, you know, and Narcan, it's like, oh, we we well, we don't want to promote, you know, people using this. Okay. That's fine. I have no problem with that. I'm also a substance abuse specialist. So, oh, okay. So they, you know, well, my son, well, my grandson, well, my nephew, niece or whoever has a, you know, alcohol problem or this and that, a a drug problem, this and that. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Let's sit down and let's talk about that. Mm -hmm, You know, mm -hmm. so what I do, I before I uh, came here, I talked to Miss Patty. And uh, I told her, I said that <laughs> I actually was doing a counseling session with somebody who was using and they had thought about using right before I came here. Mm. And I just wanted to have that time because I know being an addict and when you're venting to other people, especially someone who is temporary response, responsive sure. or whatever, you have to have that time to listen and let them vent. Don't judge and just let it let them go. You know, I let her know beforehand that I had a meeting to go to (laughs) and I said and listen she was like thank you so much you know and just that little part right there that support part and I've been very successful in my role at Community Wellness Project to promote harm reduction and substance abuse um, support services. Was it hard for you or is it hard for you as as kind of an AA guy Mm -hmm to wrap your head around harm reduction uh in the beginning yes yeah i was gonna say because i've talked to other folks who you know work the program and they've even been on you know the podcast and even even i mean we don't think about sans bar Mm -hmm. as harm reduction but it is Mm -hmm. in a lot of cases Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. where you're trying to create an environment where maybe somebody can drink less or can have different alternatives. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes, you know, people even will say to me like, oh, I'm, I'm pretty uh, old school (laughs) and I know what that means. Right. right? (laughs) And so if somebody's quote unquote old school, they sometimes Mm -hmm. do have a hard time wrapping their brain around test strips and, you know, needle exchange and things like that. Yeah. Um, so it, it was hard for you at first? Yeah, at first it was hard. Because so what the, changed then? Um, I think seeing my community. <sighs> and your community means what? Seeing Just my community. The, the community of addiction. Okay. Which is very prevalent in the area that I work on the east side. On the east side, okay. So seeing that and seeing these people every other day it's like wow they they you don't know if they're gonna you don't know if you're gonna see them that following week you get so used to them speaking hey mr kevin this and you know whatever the case may be just seeing those people still living within the system and i want to try to promote and try to help and educate and teach people their independence you know i want i don't want them to depend on 
that, and that, that, and that. No, let's sit down and do this application together because that's what I, that's what we do. We not only support services for substance use, but support services mm-hmm. because they may know the basic, their name, the address. Well, I stay with my sister. Okay, what's that address? Well, what does this mean, Mr. Kevin? The little stuff. You want them alive to keep coming around. Please. Because <laughs> you want to maintain the connection. Exactly. And you, exactly. what I'm hearing you say is like you'd love them to not use. Exactly. But you also would rather keep seeing them. Yeah. Yeah, because if I can keep seeing them and if I can, you know, we also have a food pantry. Yep. I give them, you know, maybe a box this month might be this big. And then the following month, it might be a bag this mm-hmm. heavy. Mm-hmm. But at least I gave them something. Right. Because somewhere somebody didn't give them something. And I don't I, I feel bad if I didn't give them at least one can mm-hmm. to help them through the whole night. Right. I don't know what's going on. All I know is that I want to help people in recovery, period. So what is next for you, my friend? Because you're getting all these credentials (laughs) and, you know, we've got volume one. Uh And and I also want to recognize that Mm -hmm. if you do nothing else, you've already been successful. So I know when people are like, what's next? Then it makes you kind of get this feeling like, what the hell? I've done a lot already. I don't know. I love it. But you are a person who wants to go on a rocket ship. So Um, where do you want to go next? What's on the horizon for you? The horizon, the rocket ship for me next. Okay, so the book is first. Yes. That came out October 2022. Okay. It's still, I'm going to put out a second volume. Okay. It's coming. I'm going to start writing it. Well, I wrote a little bit. Okay. But I'm going to try to get it out next year. And you better come on when you release volume two. Yes, okay. yes. And if, if you haven't gotten a book, then it explains my first year from DJ to Deacon, The Life of an Alcoholic, volume one. And it just explains the, 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 the moments up to my first year of sobriety, which is... December 25th, 2012, Christmas Day. So I have the book. I also did uh, starting a podcast. It's mm-hmm. called Recovery Loading. Woo! And I did one episode right now. Okay. I'm, life kicks in. And like my guy say, life be lifing. So I'm going to take my time with it, but not take too much time. I got to stay consistent on it can people listen to it now or is it yes, not released it's yet? on it's on my uh it's on my facebook page k-e-v-y space k-e-v kevy kev look for the icon that looked like me <laughs> he's bald with a purple suit and great i'm You're telling amazing. you amazing okay all right <laughs> so, okay so and and the the podcast is called recovery, recovery loading. loading yes okay. it's all right. on my podcast i saw my uh facebook page okay uh also i have a online store called know your recovery mm. it's ha- it hasn't been activated yet it's okay it's coming it's coming i also have a facebook page uh instagram page a dot com um let's see what else i'm uh, and in the future, it. it, you're man. hoping to start your own nonprofit. Is yes, this correct? Yes. I and you, she remind me, y'all. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. I am starting my nonprofit recovery loading. And the only thing, like I said before, all I want to do is just help us in recovery any way that I can. I see a lot of conferences here and there, uh, a lot of big agencies, and I'm not knocking none of that. But what about let's just get a table and some chairs and a pop up. Let's go down the street down here and just pass out some Norcan. Or let's go down here and do some resource. I've seen you, you in know. action, my friend. <laughs> I under I mean, there is something to be said for a very and I a grassroots one on one human connection mm-hmm. that doesn't require a lot of red tape and doesn't right. require all of that stuff. Right, right. Um, you're very approachable. Um, you speak from experience. And seeing you at work, Mm -hmm. um, you know, that gentleman that I brought over, like you were in a position to help him. I was not. You were. Right. Um, I, I think you would, I think a non, I think if you decide to go with a nonprofit or even an LLC or whatever, I think it would. Yeah, I'm going to try to go. There would be a need for it. I'm going to go for both. 
Oh, you're going for both. I'm going, I'm going to, I'm going to do DJ both. and Kevin Kev's going yeah, for both. I'm going for both, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, will you come back when that, with volume two and when you're nonprofit or LLC or whatever, your rocket ship? <laughs> the empire. That's it. That's it. The, the empire. The recovery empire. That's it's coming, y'all. Watch out. It. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for being here. Thank this you. has flown by. If you want to learn more about Kevy Kev and all of his <laughs> empire, his, his empire, uh, please consider rating, reviewing, and subscribing to The Preventable. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us at The Preventable, brought to you ad-free by Prevent Ed. Prevent Ed works to reduce or prevent the harms of alcohol and other drug use through education, intervention, and advocacy. Please visit their website at prevented.org. Like what you heard? Rate, review, and subscribe to stay up to date with what we are serving on The Preventable.